Good morning, can you hear me? Excellent, good, wonderful, that's really nice. Welcome to Harvest. It's not quite normal harvest, is it? Let's be honest. It's going to be a little bit different, so we kind of have to sort of imagine quite a lot of it. So first thing to imagine, all that lot sort of lying around the church, but obviously we're not allowed to do that, so apologies for that. This is going to be the nearest we can get. We've been, we think we've been quite ingenious. It might just appear daft, but it's basically the nearest we can get to an all-age service, so expect excitement. And that, part of the reason for that is because Rachel, do you want to come up a minute and say hello, is going to help us lead. So do, should we just say welcome to Rachel? Hello, hello. <laughs> I feel like I'm being blamed for the mess and the chaos. I think you've just basically said we're going to have mess and chaos because Rachel is here. Yep, yeah. that's a good point. It's, it's, not, it's not my fault. <laughs> I'm glad we've got that clear. That's a, <laughs> in other words, don't blame me. <laughs> now, it's going to be very exciting. We hope. Uh, it might be quite messy. There's interesting ingredients on these tables, and we have, you can't believe the, uh, the complications of trying to do it with COVID and ingredients and bubbles of different people. So bear with us. It might be interesting, or it might be really dull, but hopefully not. We'll see what we can do. Now, so let's just take a moment. Let's come into God's presence. Realize he is here with us now. And this is our opportunity to thank him. Even though there have been horrendous things this year, there have also been things to thank him for. And this is the time we do that. So on the screen... We have some words. Once again, uh, I'll do the white, and if you could join in with the yellow words. So let's pray. God, our Father, we thank you that seed time and harvest demonstrate the abundance of your creation. Thanks be to God. Lord Jesus, thank you for your generosity to us. We offer you the gifts brought today, the fruits of the earth which you have given. Let these gifts benefit those who need them most. Thanks be to God. Holy Spirit, keep our hearts and minds generous and compassionate. Remind us that it is not by bread alone that we live. Help us to depend on the true bread from heaven, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we're going to, obviously we can't sing, so we're going to listen and read the words to We Plow the Fields and Scatter. So we'll have to imagine this year.
Thank you, Tracy. Now, we're thinking about thankfulness, and I'd like to invite uh, two people to come up and to tell us. Uh, it is quite hard, this. If, if I say to you, right, tell me what you're thankful for, actually, is it the case that the first few things that come to mind are things that we're quite annoyed about, like lockdown and all these other things that are kind of holding us back? But actually, you kind of have to delve around, and it is so good, it is so healthy, spiritually and mentally, to think about thankfulness. So we're going to have a think about it. So, George, can I invite you up? George is going to tell us about thankfulness and something he's thankful for, aren't you, George? Yes. Excellent. Okay, fire away. In lockdown, I was thankful for people being more aware of nature and God's spectacular creation. I am thankful that people have also become more aware of climate change and the impacts we are having on God's world. I am thankful for my teachers who are still able to teach me and communicate with me. I am thankful for technology that I could still talk and see my granny and granddad, my cousins and my friends. Brilliant. I think he puts me to shame. Now, Susan, are you coming? Would you like the step or? That wasn't a pointed comment. <laughs> Well, hello, everybody. I better not get too near. My husband complains when it crackles. <laughs> when ben, I was asked to do this, I must admit I was very nervous. And actually, believe it or not, I've been nervous for quite a while this morning. But I just wanted to relate it, really, to harvest. And I was thinking about it and praying about it. And the verse of scripture came to me about the fruits of the Spirit. So can I just read this to you now? It says... But when the Holy Spirit controls our lives, he will produce the kind of fruit in us. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. But don't worry, I'm not going to talk about all of them. <laughs> but what I am going to share is three of them. I think the thing that's impressed me most is the first one on that list, love. So much love has been shared around. But first of all, it's God's love. It never changes. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So God's love is always there. In fact, as you all know, his love was so great, he gave us his son, Jesus, who died for us. Then I thought about the love of people for each other. I don't know whether people think I'm really old, but I must admit, I quite a few people came to offer to do my shopping for me. They were some of my youth club fathers actually one was particularly and you know to think that they just care and how we've been able to show God's love to other people by ringing them by sharing the problems and talking with them and reassuring them love in action then the next one is joy well as you all know to me children are joy I've missed them all greatly but I thought of the joy that God gives. It's an inward joy. It's not something that comes in phrases or makes you jump up and down, although some people find that helpful. But it's just something that gives you such a feeling inside. And I've had this feeling about the children during the break. We've been able to send them out things for Easter, things for Pentecost, things for St. Peter's Tide, and also for harvest and to think the joy it gives me thinking that this is going into the homes they've gone to youth club and sunday school some of those families have never really bothered much with god before they've had the opportunity and then the greatest joy of course was the the ones we did in the summer instead of holiday clubs the party bags and how many people took part and listened to the video and the feedback we got from these things has been absolutely great and now the next one is a bit selfish as well peace because I'm an early riser and it was beautiful weather some of the time and I used to get up early and go for a walk and can't follow George really but it's true when you're out with nature and there's no cars no nothing you do appreciate God and 
it gives you such a peace inside. In fact, I even used to sing on my way back from the golf course because nobody was around. And I'm not a very good singer, but I could enjoy praising the Lord like that. So that was peace. And then a peace because we've had more time to pray, more time to spend with God. That's another inner peace. But I just wouldn't like you to think that my life's been absolutely fantastic all this time because I'm a social bud and I've missed people. But I found a hymn, a verse of a hymn that I think helps me it says i do not know what lies ahead the way i cannot see yet one stands near to be my guide he'll show the way to me i know who holds the future and he'll guide me with his hand with god things don't just happen everything by him is planned so as i face tomorrow with its problems large and small i'll trust the god of miracles and give to him my all. We don't need a sermon now, really, do we? <laughs> that was magnificent. Thank you so much. Absolutely brilliant. Now, for the th I was going to, what I would love to do now is send a microphone round so that we could all say things that we are thankful for. We can all come up with something, can't we? Obviously, trouble is due to COVID, we can't do that. So I'm going to ask you to think, we'll just have a moment of quiet as we think about the things, there have been some awful things, but there have been some good things too, maybe related to what Susan just said. So let's have a think, a bit of calm, and after that, we're going to pray um, our confession. I'll finish up with a prayer after we've had a moment of quiet, then we'll have the confession. So let's just think for a moment. Let's have a moment of calm and bring to God those things we're grateful for. So, Father God, we thank you for those things that we've just brought to mind. We are so grateful for the goodness that you still show us, even in difficult times. Amen. So now we come to our time of confession. We can clear the decks. We've said thank you to God. Now let's say sorry for all those things that we know we've done wrong, and even the things we have done wrong that we don't know about. Okay, so we're going to say these words on the screen. I'll say the white as usual. We confess to you, Lord, our lack of care for the world you have given us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We confess to you our selfishness in not sharing the earth's bounty fairly. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And we confess to you our failure to protect resources for others. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And so may Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring us his pardon and peace now and forever. Amen. I'm going to hand over to Rachel now. Okay, we, it's not the messy bit yet, don't worry. Um, we're going to listen to a song to start with. I heard this song um, probably in the middle of lockdown. I don't know if anyone's heard it before, but it's called Take Me Back. Um, and I was feeling particularly low one morning and um, Alexa is someone who always cheers me up. Um, for those of you who don't know, Alexa is my best friend. She's in the kitchen with me and she's a little speaker and um, uh, Andrew disagrees with me, but I'm pretty sure she has a brain. She, can, she knows what I'm thinking. And when I say to her, my favorite phrase or favorite sentence is, Alexa, play me some Christian worship music. 
and that's normally what I say to her, and she will play me um, some Christian worship music. And one particular morning, about, yeah, probably halfway through lockdown, I was, I was feeling really uh, a bit angry, a bit confused, a bit not really know where, where, in, where the world was going, and I said, Alexa, play me some Christian worship music, and this is what she played me. And I broke down in the kitchen and thought, this is now my favorite song. Um, so I don't know whether anyone can relate to it, but the words will be on screen and enjoy. Walk on my own, but I wound up alone. Now I'm making my way to the foot of the cross. It's not a trophy for the winners, it's a shelter for the sinners. In his power, I belong. Take me back to the place that feels like home, to the people I can't depend on, to the faith that's in. The reading today is taken from Matthew 13, verse 33. Jesus also used this illustration. The kingdom of heaven is like the yeast a woman used in making bread. Even though she put only a little yeast in, three measures of flour, it permeated every part of the dough. This is the word of the Lord. This is the messy bit, just to let you know, be warned. (laughs) You said this was a good idea, just to warn you. Okay, Uh, good morning again. Hello. Um, So, our reading today was all about bread. So when Ben asked me to do a talk this morning, and especially involve uh, the children, I thought what a shame it is that we're in the situation that we're in, and I can't have all the children out here making bread. However, whoever's in charge of church cleaning this week is probably quite pleased about that, but we will do it when we're allowed. Um, So the way uh, we've decided to do it is um, we're going to bring you St. Peter's Great British Bake Off. Um, Is anyone a Bake Off fan? Excellent. 
I'm a big Bake Off fan. Uh, anyone who watched it last week will know that it was bread week. It was perfect. Um, so Paul Hollywood couldn't be here, unfortunately, but I'm here instead. Um, so uh, today we're, we're using our bubbles. We're using our, um, our church bubbles. And the bubbles that we can use is uh, we can use the Gunter clan. Give me a wave, Gunter clan. We can use the Gunters, because the Gunters are already here, represented. And we can use the Watson clan, because we're already uh, represented today. So um, while I am talking, you've got a signature challenge today. So would you like to come up, Gunter clan and Watson clan? Yeah. Okay, so your challenge today is to make the best white dough that you can make, okay? Um, and it will be judged at the end. And maybe the one with the least mess might get more, um, more points. You have got everything that you need. Um, you've got your bread mix, you've got your tepid water, um, and uh, that is all you need. So, um, so while I'm talking, you're going you're gonna to get on. Is that okay? Yeah? Okay. And we'll judge it in a bit. Okay. I'll leave them to get on. So um, the rest of us, um, has anyone ever made bread before? Who's made bread? Excellent. Um, has anyone made anything exotic? Has anyone made anything like a focaccia or a ciabatta? Oh, very good. Oh, Sophia, I didn't know that. Oh, well done. Um, so what do we need to make bread? I'm going to show you white loaf we've got um, we've got some salt we need salt I'm hoping Archie and Liliana can see me right at the back sorry guys we need some, salt. We need some water preferably tepid water we need get it out we need some sugar I'm getting on over there not too messy so far. And we need some red flour. Okay. Um, there's one ingredient that I've missed out. I wonder whether Archie, Liliana, Sophia, anyone know? What have I missed out? Yeast. I've missed out the yeast. Okay. We've missed out the yeast. The yeast is the most important ingredient. It transforms the dough. So while... They're getting on with that. Very quiet. While they're getting on with that, I want us to have a think about this yeast. Okay, I want us to spend a few minutes thinking about yeast because the yeast is, it transforms the dough. And if we imagine that ourselves, that we are like the dough without the yeast, then we can imagine that the yeast is like Jesus because Jesus' love is transforming. His love spreads through us right to the ends of our bodies, just like the yeast, even a tiny little bit, permeates the dough, just like Andrew said in the reading. But it's interesting that the yeast isn't just a magic ingredient. We can't just add it and it's like a magic, ta-da, it's all done. In a minute, I'm hoping they're going to demonstrate that um, the yeast has to be kneaded into the dough. Okay, I'm getting into technical details now but you need to knead it. And as I was thinking about this, I had a really lovely image. It's not very biblically correct, but in my head, I had an image of God being a bit like a baker and him kneading us and forming us. And I don't know about you, but I feel like God's constantly kneading me and forming me and reshaping me. So I'm just going to check how they're getting on. She didn't know before this morning that this was happening. Um, so, once the yeast has been kneaded through us, once Jesus' love has been kneaded through us, we can then spread that into the community because we are like the yeast in the community. Because if we follow Jesus, then we have the opportunity to spread this further. And here at St. Peter's, I think it's something that we do really, really well. In fact, I don't think we give ourselves enough credit. 
Um, I started making a list of all the things that we were doing in the community before lockdown and um, I, I, I lost count of the amount of things that we were doing. Um, and even during lockdown, when there were those huge barriers, we were still able to reach out to the community in some amazing ways. And then I know going forwards, there are already people uh, with amazing ideas of things that we can do. Oh, isn't it amazing when, you know, when lockdown's over, we can do this and we can do that. And there's already that desire to spread Jesus' love even further. So therefore, we can describe St. Peter's as a very yeasty place. I don't think we should put that in the profile. I don't think it doesn't make us sound very appealing. But for the purpose of today, I do think that we are very yeasty. Okay, there's a lot of potential at St. Peter's. Even the Archdeacon thinks there's a lot of potential because they're going to hopefully give us a new vicar. So, before I go and see what's going on, I think that no matter who we are sitting here today, no matter how, how old we are, what opinion we have of ourselves, we are all agents of change. Now, Ben said that phrase to me, and I kind of had an image of us all standing there with shades on, like super agents. Um, and we're not. What were you doing? We'll, we'll put the oven quite high, don't worry. Okay, so we're all agents of change. We're all part of God's creation, and we're part of his provision. Okay, I'm warning you, I'm getting to a sensible bit, so you're going to have to be sensible. Before I go and judge this chaos, I want to finish with a poem. And it was a poem that was in uh, the kitchen of my family home. My parents are here this morning, actually. And it was in our um, family kitchen as I was growing up. And I think it sums up kind of how I feel about uh, being part of God's creation. Because sometimes it is a little bit daunting. It's called Restoration. So... God's work of art, that's me, then beauty must lie in the eye of the beholder. I feel might look more like one of those statues Michelangelo left half emerging from the marble block, full of potential on the verge of life, but still imprisoned by circumstance and fear. Yet part of me is free, and you are still creating, bringing to life the promise that is there. Sometimes by hammer blows that jar my being, sometimes by tender strokes, half felt which waken me to life. Go on, Lord, love me into wholeness. Set me free to share with you in your creative joy, to laugh with you at your delight in me, your work of art. Amen. I don't go over there. Let me go and see. Hang on. That's amazing. Okay, oh God. So they're going to go home, <laughs> hopefully they're going to go home and I want you to bake your bread if you can. Really? Um, and anybody else, so Sophia's family, Archie and Liliana and anybody else, if you want to go home and make some bread that would be super and if you could put, it on the, put a picture on the Facebook page um, and we can spread a bit of um, bready yeastiness around Norton. Okay, um, thank you, and I apologise. <coughs> Can I have the key to the toilets, please? <laughs>
really think about this, did I? Because we're now going to do some prayers, which my children are involved in. <laughs> um, are you in a state to, able to pray, do you think? Yeah. yeah, come on up then. Let us pray. We, pray. we praise you for the harvest of local hedgerows, for the stra straggling brambles, for black showers of, elderly, of elderberries, for mushroom nestling in the dewy grass. We praise you for the harvest of gardens and allotments, for earthy roots and crackling carriage, for hanging beans and striped crochets. As we celebrate our plenty and give thanks for our food, Father, we praise you for all you have done and for all you have given. For shelves that are laden and cupboards that are full, for food available and varied, for taste and, fla and for flavour, for a healthy appetite and the means to satisfy it, we pray for people who go hungry and those who help to feed them. We praise you for the harvest of talents in this church, for, his build, for buildings maintained, for flower arrangements and music, for the responsible stewardship. We praise you for the harvest of fellowship here at St. Peter's, for friends made and support given. For people to laugh with and cry with, we praise you for the harvest for, of prayer in this place, for commitment deepened, for discipleship taken, for the cross carried and the burdens borne. We give thanks. Amen. We're going to finish with the Lord's Prayer, but it's the messy church Lord's Prayer. It's not messy, don't worry. Um, but it's the Messy Church Lord's Prayer, and it has actions. For those of you who came to Together at Four, um, a couple of times we did it there. So you might remember some of the actions. We're going to demonstrate it for you, um, and then uh, we'll have a go at doing it together. Okay. So. Up here, you three. I'm going to stand up here, and then people might be able to see you. Okay. So, these are the actions. So, our, our Father, Father in, in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be your name. Your, name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come, your will be done, done on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us Even this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not, not into temptation, temptation but, but deliver us from evil. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. And forever. Amen. Amen. Okay, so you have a go. <laughs> Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory now, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Yes. Spot on. Spot on. <laughs> Not chaotic at all. Thank you. Thank you, Watson family. Should we give them a round of applause? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you can just take over.
I'm off. <laughs> no, anyway, let's have a think. We've got a few things. Uh, one is we're going to have a song. This is a song, I the Lord of Sea and Sky, which Steve's going to play. Once again, please don't sing, but do appreciate the amazing words this has. It's really, really powerful. I will hold your people in my heart. Aren't they magnificent words? Lovely, lovely words. Anyway, right, on to notices, and Neil would like to come and explain something. Morning, everyone. Right, part of God's provision, of course, hopefully, will be that we will have a new vicar sometime in the coming months. 
uh, and I've been asked on behalf of um, the PCC if I just bring you up to date with where we are in that process. So as we mentioned quite recently, the first step is to produce a parish profile. That's basically just a document which describes the type of church we are and the work that we do, coupled with our hopes and expectations of the person who's going to join us, our new vicar. Always, of course, seeking God's guidance in what he wants us to do as a church going forward. So all the members of the PCC have been working hard on the profile, and we think we have most of the content gathered and written now. There's still some work to do to edit it down to a manageable length. We don't really want to publish it in 17 volumes. So. <laughs> and we've also got to include a number of photographs. We're hoping that that will take up most of the document in the end, because photos speak a lot more loudly than words, don't they? Uh, and that's, the pictures are going to be of things that we've done and things we've been involved in in the last two or three years. We're going to publish the document electronically, but it's also going to be possible to print it out so that anybody will be able to have a look at it afterwards. We've set ourselves quite a tight deadline to finish editing it. Um, I think we're going to do that in the next few days. Uh, so we hope to publish it within the next couple of weeks or so, which I think is quite quick for these sorts of things. Once it's ready, we'll let the bishop and Archdeacon Sam know, and then they can start advertising our vacancy, which I think they're going to do nationally, not just within York Diocese. We'll then wait for the applications to flood in. Hopefully, yeah. Um, when the diocese has a shortlist of suitable applicants, they do a process that's called discernment, which is basically... Um, it's the means by which the church seeks to discover God's will for St. Peter's in the form of the best candidate for the job. So one or more candidates, I guess, will be judged to be suitable. They'll then be interviewed by a panel, including the bishop, the archdeacon, and two parish representatives we appoint here to represent our interests. After that, we should know who's been recommended to become our new vicar, and we can get ready to welcome them into our parish and set a date for the service of induction and collation to the job. Now, we don't have an exact time frame for all of this yet, but I think we would hope and expect that a new vicar would be appointed perhaps round about the turn of the year and in place in Norton sometime in the spring. So that's really something to look forward to. So can I ask you, please pray for the PCC as it completes the work on the profile, also for the bishop and the archdeacon as they look at the applications in due course, and most importantly, for that person, whoever it is, who God's chosen to become our new vicar and formally have the cure of souls in the parish of Norton at some point in 2021. So thank you and bless you all. Thank you, Neil. Do we have any birthdays? Oh, conspicuous silence. Okay, well... I, th I will have to manage without then that will that will be something else but let's leave that on while we share the peace together now we've done all those other different ways of sharing peace i always think sort of harvest sowing the seed or kneading i can't think of a way to no maybe not the kneading one but uh, i don't know choose choose how you would like to share the peace and we will share it together so we are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Well, you can keep doing that if you like, but Tracy's going to uh, play our next hymn, which, I don't know, I kind of think we ought to be allowed to hum. If you hum under your breath and keep your mouth shut, I think you're probably safe. <laughs> but, uh, and also it means we don't have to hear each other. No, I didn't say that. Please do worship in the way you find most appropriate, but let's enjoy the words again.
My Saviour God, how great thou art. What could be more powerful than that? We're bringing our service to a close now with the blessing. So let us say that. May God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the source of all goodness and growth, pour his blessing upon all things created and upon us, his children, that we may use his gifts to the glory and the welfare of all peoples and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and those whom you love now and always. Amen. I do want to say, we did say at the beginning, but just reiterate, thank you so much if you brought gifts. We have got tables piled full of stuff, and it's just wonderful, and it will be distributed to those who need it. So thank you once again. That is a wonderful thing. Um, I think that's, I think we've finished, haven't we? Unless you want to say anything else, Rachel. (laughs) She's looking very relieved. Didn't she do well? Very good. Thank you very much. Anyway, let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen. See you next time.